So the topic that we're going to see today is basically on uh, the token bus uh, land. So we have uh, not talked a lot about uh, the token ring and basically the concept of token passing. So ultimately the idea here is you're going to have a controlled access unlike the random access scheme where uh, you're going to control it by circulating the token. So one who gets hold of the token is the one who's actually authorized to transmit the frame. But, um, how long they can basically transmit the frame if there is going to be some limitation so that you don't monopolize by taking control over the media. So here um, uh, we actually you know very comprehensively studied about uh, 802.5 token ring where we analyzed uh, uh, what are the different ways in which you can actually you know uh, reinsert your token uh, when can you release the token what is how is the latency going to affect uh, the efficiency of the utilization of the ring right uh, how do you handle priorities uh, with respect to stations who has frames uh, uh, rather than going on with a round robin fashion and all that but ultimately the uh, you know uh, the topology is basically a physical ring uh, now just imagine now um, initially it was not the ring it was the bus topology that was there when uh, Metcalf was basically working on Ethernet uh, where uh, he had the bus topology and uh, he used this carrier sense uh, concept to basically you know use the medium IBM was working on um, you know claiming having a controlled access by using this concept of token so the first thing that was standardized was basically the concept that uh, having the concept of controlled access using token in a physical bus topology right that was standardized as 802.4 and then only followed uh, the you know the ring kind of a manner uh, where uh, you know it was actually standardized as 802.5 so 802.4 is of use scope now because it is not uh, basically going to be used as bus topology is no more uh, as you know uh, kind of topology used so yeah uh, apart from that there is fiber distributed data interface as well which is actually a dual ring based on fiber links uh, but uh, on a ring topology anyway so we will work on this um, 802.4 uh, standard which is basically the token bus LAN so as I told you it's a physical bus topology but the idea here is the token is going to be circulated in a ring fashion logically so what you are going to do here is we are going to bring in the logical ring topology with respect to how your tokens are going to get circulated okay so it's not a physical ring it is a logical ring in terms of the circulation of the tokens that is basically going to have so how is that are you going to talk you know circulate your tokens now the idea here is in that sense you were physically connected to the next station um, and you were physically connected to the previous station in a form of ring manner so you you don't need to put the address uh, of who's going to be the next station who can actually you know get the token you typically pass the token since it's a unidirectional link, the station who is actually going to get the token, free token, is the one who is actually going to use it. Okay, so that's basically the idea. But here, since that we have a common bus, we need to have a mechanism to specify in the token frame itself the address. Okay, so whichever station is there in the token frame with its address is the one who can actually go on to use the token. So we are going to have an address hierarchy. Okay, address hierarchy meaning you are going to have you know all the stations being sorted in a kind of a you know uh, based on their MAC address you are going to actually sort. So the next station to whom you are going to circulate the token uh, which is basically your successor is the one who is having the next highest MAC address compared to you. Okay, so how is that we are going to follow this address hierarchy? We have to come up with some you know control uh, management frames to basically find out who is going to be your preceding station, who is going to be your successor station. So that is one thing there. But you need to close the ring. So ultimately what happens is that um, the final highest address station should be closing out with the lowest address station in a logical manner. But please understand we are not bringing any relation here between the physical location of the station to its address because in the bus you can go on to tap any station it is not necessary uh, that the stations should only be placed in the bus in the sorted MAC order that is impossible you just keep your MAC address will be random but the idea here is though your physical location your MAC address is not sorted 
logically you try to follow a sorted kind of an address hierarchy so that you can talk you know circulate your tokens so to to actually justify that fact now here you see the picture uh, where you basically have several stations whose mac address is known this is just for your understanding that there are some numbers and this is how it is placed in the bus but you also have to see that uh, the stations uh, you know our uh, mac address are not basically in a sorted order they can be any order but the ultimate idea here is this physical topology we need to actually form a logical topology in the form of ring such a way that the token is going to be passed in a hierarchical address manner meaning um, you know uh, the sorted order based on the mac address the next token has to be passed to the next highest mac address so from 81 it goes to 128 and 128 it goes to 156 and the last highest address gets connected to the lowest address in the station right to close the ring so it forms a logical ring but ultimately the token is going to be placed on the common bus and so one who how the station will come to know that he can go on to you know take the token is by looking at every station will go on to ponder the destination address in that particular token and see if it is basically for them so this is basically the token passing sequence concept uh, that is basically followed in the token bus unlike token ring where you don't need to specify the address in the token who basically can go on to claim okay so uh, we're going to do this the token holding station um, is the one who actually has the right to transmit right so it's only one station who can transmit at a time in a bus because it's a common shared medium all other stations are just going to you know in the receive frames at any time so every other station is only you know uh, has the authority to receive the frames but though it's not addressed to them uh, it's a common bus so you need to understand that concept so um, how long you can actually hold the token you need to understand that you have to release a token compulsorily because you have to have a fairness being addressed here. So when to release a token is basically if you completed your tra frame transmission, not an issue. But the point here is this is going to be a timeout interval, which basically is the maximum token holding time for which uh, you know you can actually go on to transmit. So before that token holding time times out, uh, you can actually complete your transmission, or you have to wait. You know to get your chance so um, so you go on to release a token as soon as uh, you know the timeout happens or before the timeout happens and pass on the token uh, such a way that the token is put onto the bus with the next successor address in it which is basically the one who has to take it so who's going to take it uh, every station is going to actually monitor the medium and um, they have to see whether uh, the address is specified in the token and uh, even though say the specified address uh, you know in the token does not have any data to transmit he has to pick up the token right and um, he has to again uh, go on to maintain continuity even if he does not have the data to send he has to pass the token which means uh, by putting the next successor to him uh, in the uh, address uh, sorted manner so this is basically something where if you don't have data you're going to circulate the token uh, by putting the corresponding address and then pass on if you have data then once you get hold of the token which is specified then you can actually go on to send your uh, to, you know, data until your token holding time or your timeout happens but the point here is this there's going to be hell a lot of issues that we are going to face in this um, but yeah prior to that as uh, you know we keep seeing this frame format here again it's much similar to the one that we saw in the token ring that uh, there's going to be something called as a preamble and the start delimiter as you know that there's going to be a long pattern of ones and zeros which is uh, going to enable you for the bit synchronization at the other end okay so uh, let's not get into this but yeah this is the major point which is the frame control field the frame control field is going to tell you whether it is going to be a control frame or whether it's going to be a data frame or whether it's going to be any kind of a management frame so that being in one octet or a, you know one byte uh, so uh, you're going to differentiate the control frames and your data frame by this sequence that's basically going to be there and yeah there's going to be a destination address and a source address please understand even a token is actually going to hold a destination address unlike in the token ring that we basically have there is a maximum limit that you can basically you know transmit per frame the data so this is nearly 81 uh, no, 9 uh, 8 2 
octets that's basically the thing and then you have the crc uh, uh, crc is basically the one that's actually being used um, and then you basically have your nd limiter to basically go on to differentiate between the frames now yeah you'll have to understand this frame control uh, where you know the eight bits uh, uh, is basically going to tell you the first two bits if you basically see it's going to be a control frame and uh, followed by that you have several other six bits combinations going to be several control frames that you basically have one such control frame is going to be your token okay so now the point is this there is a concept called response window so what do you mean by this response window which means now i have a token um, i have sent my data i need to pass this token to the next station so how will the sending station know that the token is being passed successfully which means the next successor that is specified in the token should have to be successfully receiving it um, you know uh, and there should be some form uh, indirect form in which you can understand that he has actually taken over so for which what you would do is once you pass on the token or you put the token on the bus you are going to monitor for some response activity which means you are going to keep checking whether the next station has taken over okay so how will you go on to see that is he has to go and he has to either you uh, know pass the token to the next access station or he has to start uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, start transmitting his data so i will go on to hear if there is any transmission happening after my token is actually passed on to the bus so but how long will i actually wait now in a best case the next guy is actually going to take it and he is actually going to either release the token to the next station or he is going to transmit the data. Right. So, uh, but in case if he is not responding back, you can't keep, uh, you know, waiting for a long time. So, again, we are going to have a timeout. So, there is going to be a maximum waiting time for which you can actually wait for the response from the next station. If the timeout happens and you don't basically see... Uh, any kinds of response in the medium then you have to take a corrective action by retransmission okay now here we stop uh, abruptly here because even if retransmit you're not getting what to do which basically means that either uh, the station is inactive or something has happened so you will have to pass on so let's let's try to see the corrective measures so it's token is not just the only control frames there are a lot and lot and other frames which are getting involved here okay now for the timeout period how long will you going to wait here now if you see this formula how long I'm going to wait? Since it's a bus, we need to understand that the signal has to propagate over uh, to the other extreme end and then pass on. So that is the time that we are going to wait. It's twice the propagation delay over the bus that is basically going to happen. But please understand, the frame processing time also is being added because this guy has to process the token that is being put onto the medium and then he has to either send his data or you know release the token with the next successor uh, destination so that processing time is also included along with twice your propagation delay so till that if you don't see any response happening in the medium or any anything happening in the medium then your timeout happens and you go on to retransmit the same control frame checking whether at least this time is going to respond or not so this is one concept that we're going to see um, so this is uh, the frame control fee the one octet that i was telling where the first two bits 0 0 basically tells it it's a control frame okay now if it's basically 0 1 it means it's going to be a data frame okay so again there are combinations of 1 0 and all that which is basically some management frames but let's restrict our discussions to only the different kinds of control frames that you basically have there are lots and lots of frames so the point here is i just told you first of all that you know this is this is basically the pattern for the token so this token is actually going to contain your destination address but you need to know who is going to be your next successor right for that there should be some mechanisms put in place to find out who's going to be your next successor for again that to implement it we have some control frames to find out who's going to be your next successor and for that we use a pattern called a solicit successor requesting who can be who would possibly be the next successor so that kind of a request uh, solicit successor is a frame there but here there are two different solicit successor frames one and two so we'll have to try to understand what is this basically and uh, there's something called as a claim token which is basically during the bus initialization phase this control frame is being used because um, anyone has to start up by taking the token 
So who's going to actually first uh, get over the token and then pass on the token to their successors is all during the bus initialization phase that we have to basically see. And since that it is being a shared medium, there can be a lot of possible things that the frames, you know, initially can actually collide because when multiple stations are trying to transmit, um, you know, we are not actually doing a carrier sense here. So, um, it's a controlled access. So, here again, uh, we have to have some mechanisms to resolve contention. There is a frame. Uh, called resolve contention. There's something called as an interesting thing called who follows frame. Now this basically happens if uh, uh, you need to find out, uh, you know, uh, in case uh, uh, something abnormal happens either in the station or in the token, now we have to find out uh, how can we take forward to the next stations and all that. So we will be using these who follows frames. Now let's get on to this um, uh, bus uh, initialization concept. Now initially, who is going to take the token and that is our concept. How are you going to find uh, your successors in terms of uh, the next highest uh, MAC address uh, or the previous uh, MAC address being your predecessors and all that. So here there is a concept where every station is going to maintain something called as an inactivity timer. Now what do you mean by an inactivity timer is uh, you are going to maintain a timer which basically you know uh, is actually going to be reset whenever you hear any transmission on the bus. So over a period of time, if you basically don't see anything happening in the bus, uh, you monitor and uh, nothing happening, then the every station's inactivity timer slowly starts to, uh, you know, expire, depending on, uh, you know, when they have actually reset the uh, timer. So the one whose, uh, you know, inactivity timer expires first, is the one who actually goes on to see whether I can go on to claim the token. Okay, so there is a concept here. Now, if the token is lost and uh, all the network activity halts, then every station's inactivity, you know, a timer starts to expire one by one. But the one who's having the, you know, uh, first uh, inactivity timer expiring starts the bus initialization process. This can be the initial process or it can be after ring maintenance where you try to recover. Uh, so who's going to claim the token? Basically, everyone starts to use this uh, frame called the claim token. So the first station whose timer expires is going to claim the token. Uh, with its address in it obviously but ultimately uh, if other station who goes on to hear the claim token and sees that hey come on your address uh, is actually my address is actually higher than you uh, so I will be basically trying to claim the token so this goes on with the response from the other stations as well that I would like to claim so ultimately the one who's having the highest address will go on to send the claim token since it's greater and he becomes the owner of the token because there will be no other claim tokens that can be sent because all of the stations are having its address lesser than that of the claims token address okay so the first owner who takes hold of the you know token um, is the one who's actually going to uh, find out uh, to whom he has to release the token because now that he has got the token he can transmit and all that but the point is he has to find out the next station in the logical ring in a sorted manner for that we are going to use solicit successor one frame meaning there is two kinds of solicit successor so here initially you do not know you know who is going to be uh, because you do not know the address of the stations so what we are going to do here is we are going to send the solicit successor uh, frame where we are going to specify a range of addresses uh, you know in the MAC addresses in the list itself in the frame itself that whose station is within this range okay you can try to actually go on to send a, a set successor frame which means a station is going to check whether within that range my address falls okay so that station uh, goes on to send a set successor frame uh, you know, so that he can go on to map that he is going to be the successor. But here, there is going to be a problem. The range that I specify, within that range, if there are multiple stations in the bus who actually falls in that range, then we need to have a mechanism to resolve because you may have several set successor frames being sent and this can create a problem. So what they say is when you have more responses involved, you are again going to send a resolve contention frame so that you can actually try to reduce the uh, range of addresses and then try to see which is very close uh, ascending, uh, you know, a sorted, uh, you know, station through which you can actually get the set successor frame. So once you do this, 
you go on to find your successor. Every other station will go on to repeat this procedure to find your respective successor. So please understand, I implicitly go on to understand my predecessor also when the token is released with the next successor address in it. Now from them only I actually got it. So he becomes basically my predecessor there. So yeah, this uh, once the successor is identified, the process is going to be uh, retrieved, repeated and you know you go on to find all your uh, successors. But the point here is this. now. Uh, this is going to be one station which is going to be the lowest address station, right? So he will not be able to actually fall in the range. So ultimately what happens is that there might be an highest address station who might be sending a set or a solid successor. Uh, so what happens here is you have to go on to send a set successor to frame which basically says that you know we are actually doing it in the reverse order to actually associate and then basically close the ring okay so this is basically one of the steps the two basically comes in where you are trying to do a reverse mechanism where you don't have a higher stations in the ring and so you go on to actually set it accordingly so this is one concept now uh, the concept is this now you have the bus you can go on to tap and additionally keep adding stations but still your concept of maintaining the address hierarchy should be there so what they started to do is they started to you know periodically keep sending solid set successor frames it's a periodic activity. Every station will periodically keep sending solid set successor frames. So whichever stations, if it is added new and that station entry is actually, you know, uh, within the range that has been specified. Um, so say the existing successor is having one destination address and the source uh, address is being set in this. Okay. So what you go on to do is the range is actually going to be this from the source address you know till the destination address if there is any intermediate station now he has to override the rule and he now becomes a new station right so when you keep adding you know new stations um, and you basically see this uh, uh, you know uh, existing successor already in place uh, and but if you are adding a new station and that new station's address falls within the range of the source address and the existing success address then you can go on to send the successor frame and then the successor actually changes now the token can be passed to that particular guy so this is also you know allowed and accommodated in your token bus now there's one more case where you know i suppose something inactive happens a station becomes inactive so what happens now is our you know circulations of token in the you know round robin fashion should not stop because of that inactive station since we already have set the successor now you will be keep waiting for him and uh, what happens is that uh, you know uh, no activity comes in within the response time your timeout happens then you go on to understand that there is some problem but this time you're not st you're still going to try you're going to retransmit but even after retransmitting, if there is no activity, you have to go on, uh, you know, uh, coming up with the conclusion that the successor is having some issue. So what you do now is uh, you going to bring in another control frame, which is called as the who follows frame. Who follows frame is the concept is this, as the name itself says, who is going to follow the successor, the existing successor, because uh, the current successor is actually being put, you know, in the who follows frame. So when any station goes on to every station, in fact, goes on to see the who's follows frame address, it only means that uh, some particular station would have that particular successor has its predecessor because from that successor only the token would have been you know, released with the next successor address. So that next successor address uh, would basically go on to match the predecessor there and he will go on to set the successor frame which means he is the one who is going to follow that inactive successor uh, or the inactive station and so that you can actually go on to remove that particular station from the ring now in fact if it comes up and all that there is going to be this uh, solicit successor or you know all that other frames that is going to come in where you can either add the stations or you can actually go on to uh, you know remove stations from the ring if it is inactive even if the token is lost then you are going to have the inactivity timer being lost and then people can go on to claim tokens but ultimately it is based on the mac address the one with the highest who goes on to retake you know take it and then goes on to pass around so this is basically the understanding of uh, you know token pass um, thank you for listening